mentioned in my last review, the sizes of Transformers are very interesting lately, and this is very clear with today's review. Studio Series Hot Rod. Now, a lot of people believe that this guy is an overpriced deluxe, and he is, but I will say he has a lot of good traits, and today we're going to be looking at him. So, let's get into that. And here we have Studio Series Hot Rod in his vehicle mode, and like I mentioned with the cup review, I'm not a fan of the aesthetic that a lot of the the movie after figures go on to, but I gotta say, this looks the most realistic of the vehicle modes that they do. This is very proportional. Uh, I don't know my cars, so I don't know what this looks like, but I gotta say, this has a lot of great detail. The spoiler might be a little big for some people, but I personally think it's fine, especially with the robot mode, and that's about it for those details. Uh, the pipes are painted in a nice silver, and I think that really helps make it pop. And they have some five millimeter ports on the on the back right here, which I will get into more in the robot mode with the accessories. And uh, the wheels, only the front wheels are painted and the back wheels aren't, but as I say often, I don't really care. But my biggest complaint with this uh, vehicle mode is uh, two things. So I don't like that this is just yellow. I feel like that like really makes it look off. Like look, if you look at the Kingdom Rodimus, like at least the color match is meant to like, you know, make this somewhat hidden. Having this yellow just be in there really breaks the, you know, the transformation aspect. Like so people like their vehicle modes to look like this didn't transform, but this big yellow hinge just really makes it, you know, look off. And another thing, a lot of clear plastic used, but I'll get into that once I talk about the transformation. Uh, the accessories do not really store anywhere. Uh, you can plug everything onto here, but I wouldn't fully recommend that just because it's not really... Uh, it, it bends the plastic, and I'm not personally... I don't really want to buy another one of these figures to replace that. But yeah, that's about it for the vehicle mode. Rather nice, and compared to other deluxe figures... Uh, it's pretty decently scaled. It's like everyone's saying this is a deluxe figure and avoid your price. But speaking of that, the transformation is where I feel like the price really goes into. So let's go into that. Here we have Studio Series Hot Rod in his robot mode, and I do like this, but this does have some problems. But before we get into that, let's talk about the accessories it comes with, and he comes with a lot of accessories. First off, he comes with two guns, uh, that being toy accurate to his original G1 Hot Rod toy, and they plug into his hands nicely. Uh, I personally don't use these on the shelf, but it's nice to have some extra guns, but yeah, that's about it for that. And... Let's talk about those blast effects I mentioned earlier. So as you see, these are blast effect ports and you can plug in these flame fire effects on here. And these are some ones I do like, but I don't know if this is accurate to the movie, but I would have preferred maybe some like actually fired colored effects. So yeah, that's about it with those. And the last, of the last accessory for now will be I will talk about something I really do like, that being the hands. So both hands are actually, can open and close, like Earthrise Optimus Prime and that one hand of Blitzwing, and both of these do fold away to reveal some other goodies. This is the repair thing that he used on Cup in the scene uh, after he got attacked by the squid, and the other hand becomes a 5mm port, so you can't attach anything there that has the port, but what I personally use is the saw blade he comes with. 
And I like to keep the saw blade on there just to give it a little bit difference. But yeah, both of these accessories look very... This is, both of these looks on the hands look very nice, and I do actually really like it. But let's turn these back into the normal configuration and keep talking about this figure. So I mentioned the transformation being a bit worrisome, and that is because... Right there. Now, the light isn't so good, but as you can see, the main hinges of this figure are clear plastic, and that is a big no-no for figures. So a lot of people have reported that, you know, that part cracking, and some people have even gotten this figure with some cracks on it, and that's not cool, man. I mean, you're paying $30 for an over-engineered over deluxe. Like... We're expecting someone perfection if you're going to increase the price this much for this figure. And not to say that this figure is bad. You know, I personally could care less if it's smaller than uh, your average Voyager. If it's if it's comes with just extra accessories to make it more pricey. But, like, when you're getting something that's expensive, you're you should be expecting flawlessness. Look at Masterpiece Optimus Prime, the newer one. That one has is this four hundred dollar figure, maybe even more, and you have to, and it comes with so much paint chipping. Some people even have theirs paint chipped out of the box. So having an issue like this is something that should not happen. And if they really want to have this blue, um, you know, screen there, just make it blue plastic or make it black plastic. I don't know. I mean, I get they want they want to be show accurate, but still, but. This figure does also have some other neat goodies that I do like. So let's talk about the positives now. Uh, I really like this gimmick with the head. You could open the forehead and you could reveal some epic shades. And these look very, very nice on the on Hot Rod. This is meant to re resemble the shot of him uh, shooting at the Autobot spacecraft. And yeah, those look good. Too bad Earthrise RC doesn't come with epic shades, but that's besides the point. Uh, the posability on this figure is very, very good. Uh, head click left and right. He can T-pose. He can punch forward. He has a swivel here, a swivel at the wrist. His hands can open, as I mentioned. A swivel at the waist. He can do the splits. He can kick forward and can't really kick back. He has a sw tight swivel here, but I'm assuming if you loosen that screw right there, you can get a little bit more. Has some good knee, forward and back. And has a decent pivot. So these series figures aren't really good with pivots, honestly. And this is a very good posability for a figure that looks like this. I mean, I will say, the way that this figure turns and all, how all of his, his kibble just goes into his chest, I like. Some people don't like that aspect of figures. Like I mentioned, that new Masterpiece Optimus Prime. People wish that the grill stayed as the grill. I'm personally okay with that. And as long as it doesn't have like a giant backpack... I'm fine with that. And the backpack here is perfectly fine. I think, I think you know, in a couple years, we'll probably get a better backpack or a better hot rod figure in general. But I think this is very, very good for what we're getting. Especially, you know, the other alternative is to either buy a Masterpiece one that I personally think doesn't look that good, or buy the Kingdom Rodimus, which I think you'd want a hot rod and a Rodimus, you know? But that's besides the point. I don't have that figure yet. Maybe it's really bad. Who knows? But the last thing, the last things this figure comes with is a backdrop. And this is meant to resemble the light your darkest hour thing. And this goes with the last accessories. It comes with a matrix and a matrix blast. So this means you could recreate him holding the matrix in his hands. Let's just get this bad boy in there. And he could hold it over his head. Well, you get the gist of it. You, he could hold the Matrix over his head and do the light, your, light Our Darkest Hour scene. And if only we had a Galvatron to go with this. Oh, wait. We do, and I'm excited to review that. Uh, I'll probably do this pose again just because it's a very important pose for the character. But yeah, this looks awesome. Uh, for a hot rod and I really really do like this figure I know I've been dr dragging this figure a lot but I will say this figure is good overall but before I continue talking about the figure let's go to the size comparisons 
for Sask Versions, here we have Studio Series 86 Hot Rod with Igor, Blitzwing, Dropkick, Blitzwing, Blackout, and for some extras, let's also throw in Studio Series 86 Cup, Earthrise Optimus Prime, and Kingdom Galvatron. So overall, is this a good figure? I'd say yes. Now, this figure does have its problems. It's small, it has a lot of clear plastic, and some people might not be a fan of the look. And another gripe I kind of have is that the Matrix doesn't really store anywhere. I mean, they did it with, uh, you know, Kingdom Rodimus, so I can really do it here. But with all these flaws, I think this is still a great figure. Now, $30, it's a bit steep, but I feel it is worth it. A lot of people have problems with how Hasbro is doing their sizes lately, you know? Uh, Double Dealer, Astro Train, Kingdom Optimus. People feel that those should be bigger figures for a leader price. But I, but I think that we're getting a lot of great engineering with those figures and this figure. I mean, we could be getting a cheap, crappy hot rod, but we're getting a very good hot rod for a little extra money. So if you guys enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and I do recommend you buy this figure. And allegedly there is gonna be a hot rod variant, so that should be interesting. If I had to guess, it's probably gonna be a movie colors accurate version since this is another thing people are complaining about. The colors don't really match. Well, Transformers fans, get over it. And if you guys enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next review. Bye-bye, guys.